Okay, my name is Miriam Langer. I'm from Albuquerque, New Mexico. My home museum is the New Mexico Museum of Natural History and Science. And I first experienced science centers at the uh, American Museum of Natural History. I kind of grew up there. I'm from New York. So uh, I have a lot of experience and a lot of my childhood memories are um, running through that museum, trying to lose my sisters. So what do I like about science centers? Um, what do I remember about science centers? And unfortunately, I grew up never uh, having attended one or gone to one. Uh, my first experience was actually now I run one, the Discovery Center in Colorado Springs, uh, Colorado. And um, I just love science centers because they inspire communities, they inspire children, they inspire adults, and it creates passion uh, for science, te technology, engineering, and mathematics. And the Space Foundation, which I work for, we're all about space. And so space is a great hook uh, to get those people inspired and uh, get the passion stirred for space and exploration and just creativity in general. I graduated from college with a museum studies degree. Um, education was something I sort of stumbled into and then uh, moved to Little Rock, Arkansas and found the Museum of Discovery. And uh, education um, is my passion. That's where I've been ever since. Um, and I love it. And so Aztec, this is my second Aztec. I was in Albuquerque a couple years ago. Um, so I'm focusing on preschool education um, and also volunteer coordination. So, Thanks very much. Thank you. Hey, my name is Professor Antonio Paris. I am an astronomer at, in St. Petersburg College, as well as MOSI's uh, Space Programs Director in Tampa. Okay. And how did you come to fall in love with science and science centers? Uh, well, as a kid, I always loved astronomy and the stars and the universe, and uh, I decided to go to college and, uh, and get my education in planetary science. And then ever since that, I've done lots of work with NASA, uh, specifically on Mars. And about a year ago, I uh, was offered a position at MOSI to be their space program director to uh, increase um, uh, kids' participation in space science. And ever since that, I've just uh, I love working at science centers and MOSI and inspiring kids to love and embrace uh, science, uh, especially astronomy. Thank you very much. Sure. Uh, my name is Andrea Reynolds. I'm from the Ann Arbor Hands-On Museum. And how did you get interested in science museums and how did you fall in love with them? Yeah, um, well I actually kind of uh, backed my way in. I started in education and um, figured out that I didn't want to be a traditional classroom teacher. And um, I started working for the museum because I thought it was a great way to use my skills as an educator in kind of a new and different way. Right. And then I started um, kind of following that path the more I enjoyed it and, and liked it and got to know it. And why are you wearing a shark hat? Um, well, my friend um, convinced me that I needed to take a selfie in the shark hat, so I agreed, because <laughs> I'm nice. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> I'm here with Kenneth Mongero from Kenya, and Kenneth, how did you fall in love with science centers? Uh, I fell in love with science centers uh, during the time I used to uh, be on training program in my research institution where I realized that children were being taken through the technical science uh, laboratories and being given a lot of PowerPoint, technical PowerPoint presentation. And at the end of, at the end of it, they were looking exhausted, they were looking disappointed, they were looking not hard, having had any fun with science at all. So uh, that's when I realized that we are doing something wrong and I went on the internet to Google to look at skills of communication because I have a background in crop science. So when I went Googling, I stumbled into the Sixth Science Center World Summit and it was marvelous. The way I participated in that conference, which was in South Africa, it was great because it was showing skills on how to make simple eggs bits and expose children to eggs bits that they can do by themselves, making the public involved in science, technology, and innovation. And this is the way to go. You cannot make a person who has no science background understand the technical science by using technical terms, technical infrastructure. No, you can't do that. You have to bring the information to repackage the scientific information into a simpler and easy to understand 
and more so to make children have fun in science. And this is what will help in career development, this is what help will help in uh, technology adoption, and we can be able to tap even the innovations that are in science with these kids. So the only way is to make science a fun, and that is the way I'm going, and that's the way I'm going to convince my country, my president, and everyone, even my family, to adopt having fun in science. That's pretty wonderful.